Hello, it's Mark Matorch here for Markham 3D, and today we're going to be creating this bunker. So let's start off, Shift A, Mesh, and let's put in a circle. So at the moment, this is two millimeters big, and we want probably the inside circumference of this bunker to be about 60. So let's scale by 30. And now if we zoom out, we can see this is 10, 20, 30, which means we've got 60. From here, I'm going to press F to make a face. And let's extrude 10 millimeters up. So E, 10. So we, if I come down into side view, I can see that we've got a 10, centimeter, um, 10 millimeter platform. Um, I want to make obviously the outside edge. So I'm going to alt right click and get that edge. And from here, I want to go out about three millimeters. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to press E to extrude, right click to put it back. I'm going to press S to scale and then shift Z to only move it on the X and Y. I'm going to hold shift so I can move slower. And there we go. So that's about three millimeters. So we've got a three millimeter wall. And how tall do we want this? Let me just get my trusty ruler. I'm just using a towel figurine that I printed just before. And my towel figurine is about 35 millimeter. So let's make this wall about 20 millimeters high. So I've alt right, alt right clicked on that circle. E to extrude 20. That seems pretty big. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import an STL of one of the uh, figurines from Thingiverse. So just bear with me. I'm going to go file, import, STL. And I found the STL. I'm just going to double click to open it. And we can see this is our character, GZ. And it's standing in there. Ooh. I think we might need to make this a little bit bigger because if we're going to have let's say four characters. Oh, actually, no, that might be suffice. It'll be a little bit um, tight, but let's just stick with that. And so from here, we've got these. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select this post, this post, this post, and this post. I'm going to extrude by 30 so that we've got kind of, um, this would be the height of our roof. But what I will do is I'm going to select these four faces and I'm going to grab these four faces in here like this. Oops. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, what I should have done first is I'm going to put an edge loop by going control R one in here, one in here, one in here, and one in here. Now Alt Shift right click to select these. And let's go GZ to move it upwards. And so I'm going to put one about here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these four vertices on each pillar. And then I'm going to press E to, whoops, E to extrude scale, um, right click to put it back in place, S to scale and shift Z. And I'm just going to bring it in ever slightly. So now we've got this step in here. And what this step is for is, so we're going to make a separate cup that sits on that roof, uh, that sits in that slot, which will be our roof. So let's now go from here we can just work backwards. So if I go tab to go into object mode, shift A, let's add in a mesh, a circle. And then if I go tab into edit mode, we should be able to see, where are we? Come on. It's, well, there it is, it's tiny. So now if we go scale by S and going 30, from here I can go G, Z, and we've got it like this. From here, I'm just going to do E to extrude. We can't really see that. And I'm going to scale that in. Nope, that didn't work because I was in face mode. So let's go into vertices. E to extrude, scale that in. 
And now I'm going to do control L to select everything that's linked. Actually, we'll scale this one in as well, just a smidgen. Control L to select everything that's linked. So everything that's touching. E to extrude, and we'll scale that, move that up. And let's E, Z again, and we'll move that up again. And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to Alt right click on this exterior. E to extrude and right click to replace it, uh, to place it back in its place. And let's go into top view. S to scale, shift Z because we only want to move on the X and Y. And we're going to kind of go a little bit bigger. Beautiful. How's that looking? That is what we wanted. Now from here, we want to... How would we like to do the roof? Would we like to do a dome roof? Or would we like to do a flat roof? If we do a flat roof, it might look a bit prettier and we can just put some crud on top. I do like the dome. I think the dome would work quite nice. However, we would need to clean it up a bit. Um, so let's do that. I'm going to Alt right click on that fa um, those edges there, press F and alt shift right click and let's just extrude on this section um, do i want to bring that section in is another story but then we've got our um, printing which will be slanted which should be fine let's just go scale and so we kind of got this roof now beautiful and so this piece will now fit directly on there, which is quite nice. Um, what should we put up here? Let's just go shift A and we will add in a cylinder. G, Z, because it's sitting all the way down here. Let's just make that a bit bigger. And I'm just going to off center that puppy. Let's move that up. So the bottom of it is in the mesh. There we go. Um, what's going on here? So it appears that it didn't keep this face here, which is fine. Let's go Alt right click and we'll just press face to put it in there. Let's control L G Z and we'll move that back in. So it's actually sitting in the mesh. Now, what can this be here? We can do shift D on this face scale. And let's go GZ, E to extrude. And I'm actually purposely making this a bit bigger. GZ, E to extrude. And while we're at it, how about we select this bottom face again? Shift D, scale, oh, scale a little bit smaller. GZ, and let's just go like this. So we've kind of got this booster type signal. Um, we can go into fancy and we can create a satellite dish, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. Just going to scale these in. Um, what I'm, I'm going to do is come over to the modifiers, add modifier bevel, and we will change this from limit method, which means at the moment, everything is being beveled. We want to change this to angle. So only things that are 90 degrees, or well, actually anything above 30 degrees will be beveled. From here, let's just go space to search and shade smooth. Yuck, but that's fine. Let's select all and shift N to fix the normals. So now we got this, which is looking quite nice. That's uh, pretty good for me. Let's come back down here and add some details in. So, what I will do is I'm going to select this lid and press H to hide. And now let's work with this section. Um, I kind of want to make a staircase back here. So I'm going to rotate Z 45. So now I've got um, this area empty um, directly on an axis rather than a pole. Now I've got this on an axis so I can do some work. I want to delete these faces, delete, actually, 
let's delete these and I can go delete vertices. And now we've got a whole bunch of open areas. So let's fill them up. Um, shift right click face and I can select this edge here and I can go face face F F F F F F beautiful. So now we've kind of got this open area from here. I'm going to do alt right click. Mm, let's just do one and we will select these vertices here E to extrude. And so we kind of got this step up and in beautiful. That looks quite nice. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, so we got kind of fit three figurines, if you know what I mean, or even two side by side. That's not too bad. I wouldn't mind putting some extra details just around the bottom here. What I'm going to do now is again, rotate 45. Just so now these pylons are here. And the question is, what can we do that'll look nice? So I've just added a cube, GZ, sorry, Y. So we can scale that up, GY, let's push that in. And I want this to go GZ, we're gonna move this GZ 10. Hmm. Didn't wanna do that. So we, let's see what, whereabouts is it at the moment? go numpad three into side view. I'm going to press N and we've got our transformation and we will change this Z to zero. So now it's level with the base. From here, let's just move this up. E to extrude. I'm going to scale this on the X axis and then control L and let's just scale everything on the X axis. I'm going to grab this G Y and so we kind of got this piece here. So just, you know, some extra decoration. Looks quite nice. From here, I am going to go back into edit mode, select everything. I'm going to come up here into our pivot point and change it to 3D cursor. I'm going to shift D and then right click to put it back in place. Press R to rotate 180, double tap, a, we'll actually press A to select everything. Shift D, right click to put it back in place, rotate 90. So we kind of got this. Now, is that protruding on the inside is a question. It appears so ever so slightly. So let's just go back in and we will select these back faces, scale, Scale Y. Come on. Scale X. Scale Y. And scale X. There we go. So now we've got this cool little turret. Alt H to separate, uh, to unhide everything. Let's delete these characters because we don't need them. Um, we will add in our bevel and we might go angle and change and bump it up a little bit and smooth. Let's right click on these and shift right click on the main body and do control J to join. Um, let's bump this one up as well. All right. Now, do we want to add in a little bit of extra detail or do we do that post? Let's add in some extra details. So I'm going to alt right click on that one. Uh, alt right click on the middle one, alt right click on the middle one there. I'm going to do control B to do a bevel and middle and the mouse wheel up to add in an extra groove. Um, let's bring it about there. I'm going to press control minus to move in by selection and let's do alt S to scale inwards. There we go. So we've kind of got this as if they're separate pieces now, just add in a little bit of detail. Um, from here, I'm going to select this. I'm going to press I to do an inset. 
And from here, let's do it again. Control B to do a bevel. Whoa. <laughs> Didn't like that, did it? So we've got some weird edges in here. So let's go Control Z, Control Z. Undo all that. Let's do select all and shift N to flip the normals. Let's press I and we can see that we've got problems. Okay. Scale. Oops. Let's go scale shift Z. No, we won't. Let's turn off our pivot point back to medium point. Let's do I to do an inset. And what we will do now is delete all these faces. Let's select these vertices here. Alt M to merge at center. Alt M to merge at center. Alt M to merge at center. Let's alt right click there, put that in. E to extrude. Let's put uh, in here. Let's put a face. Let's now do control B to do a bevel. Control minus. G, Z, and we'll bring that down. So we've kind of got this now circle in here. Just a little bit of details, that's all right. I think that suffice. Um, let's now print this. So let's do file save as, and what we're gonna do now is select the base and file export STL. And what we need to do is come down here to selection only our scale is one because everything is based on millimeters and we've got the right scale because we put in some figurines which we know are the right scale. TT bunker bottom, export STL. Let's select the top, file, export, STL, and top, export. So we're now in Cura. Let us bring our two models in and I'm just going to kind of move these around so they're more central ish. And how are we looking here? That's looking quite nice. Um, I'm not, I mean, a standard quality. Let's just rough it out. Um, we want to infill 20%. That's fine. Let's come down to speed. That's fine. Cooling. That's fine generate supports now because of the way we designed it I don't think it's going to have any supports ah yes it will have a support around there so let's go generate supports good 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 skirt we could probably go mm, let's just go brim for safety reasons and is that all I believe that's all let's slice seven hours it's preview What's this looking like? Um, and that seems fine. Now those, I reckon, I reckon there's quite a bit of support, um, supports in there, not support, infill. So I reckon we can bump this down to 10%. And the other thing we want to do is enable ironing. So that ironing will hopefully make that last layer really smooth. Um, zigzag, yeah, sure, slice, let's have a look, I saw 68 uh, mil before, and now it's 62, so that's fine, now that's a little bit worrying, but there is a little bit of a gap in there, and I remember reading something somewhere that you can't, it's difficult to have solid thing, uh, solid surfaces, but because I've got a smallest little gap in there, i have not too concerned but it does look pretty good I'm fairly happy with that good and over here looks fine as well so we will now save the file let's now just save to removable drive and we will print this overnight and hopefully I don't run out of filament so we've now 3d printed our bunker you can see here Turned out okay. I did break one of the antennas coming off. Lid just pops off beautifully. Now let's go to paint.
And so I'm pretty pleased how this turned out. It's got a very rustic look. I've kind of put mud all through it. And it looks quite nice. Um, really happy with it. Now, if you guys want me to make anything for you guys for one of your tabletop games, just let me know in the comments below and then I'll see what I can do. Please make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and keeps you up to date with my content.